You mentioned the uh, child access prevention. Yeah. Now, as I understand it, let's take the uh, Reynolds High School as an example there. Uh -huh. So the son steals the gun uh -huh. and goes and uses it. Yeah. And you have parents who are grieving over the loss of their son. They feel horrible. They feel so guilty about what happened. Now you want to charge them with a crime as well and lock them up? Yeah. Yep. Okay, let me offer a solution to that. Okay, first of all, that makes no sense at all. Um, but let me offer a, a different yeah, solution. Yes. Um, let me offer a different you know, solution. And you're already in love, you're videotaping somebody, you have to tell us. Uh, the fact that you are staging a public event and I have my device in the open, I, I'm totally and in the clear on least, that. It's considered if you tell us. Okay, I'm fine. Don't, with you, it. don't you think it would be useful for, for those parents that have kept that gun when they keep going get to it? Well, here, here's my solution to the issue. It's, okay. it's a different solution here. How about tax credits for people who buy safes? Well, we already have some things like that in place. We don't have specific things, but we'll, I'm perfectly open to doing anything. anything. But, but you want to criminalize the parents for something they didn't do. I want to do everything I can to encourage them to avoid a dangerous weapon in the hands of their children. So is this more of a deterrent bill, or is it like in hopes that people will take more precautions so they don't get locked up? Exactly. Yep. But even when it does happen, you still want to lock up the parents for something they didn't do. Well, well you know, somebody, drive, drive, somebody, drive, somebody, somebody drives drunk. drunk. Yeah, somebody drives drunk and kills somebody. They really feel bad about that. Should they be punished even though they really, really feel bad that they kill somebody with their car? Yeah, absolutely, because they did the action. Yeah, but they didn't. But negligent, failing to take a reasonable precaution is just as bad as taking a negligent action. <laughs> we, we can but in order, in order for the drunk driving to take place, several things have to take place in the line that are directly responsible to the person that that actually did it. It's not. Let me put it this way. Maybe. I don't think it's very difficult. And I will say this as a responsible gun owner, I don't think it's very difficult to keep guns in ways that even if you think that they're helpful for self-protection in the home, you can have access to them as a responsible adult and your kids don't. My mm -hmm. husband and I have weapons that we keep in responsible ways and we take our responsibility as parents and gun owners very seriously. Right. And I, th I think most and people do. I think most people do too, but I, I think a lot of people think, oh, my kid's not going to get it in the nightstand, and they don't think about the fact that either they will lose a child or somebody else will lose a child because they don't take their responsibility as a gun owner seriously enough. I understand your perspective. You come to the town hall meetings and talk with us about this, and I appreciate your perspective. I'm not saying word one about people not owning guns. And in fact, the bill even has provisions that a 16-year-old who is in possession of a hunting license which requires firearm safety training, can be using a weapon unsupervised in the context of using their hunting license. I completely support hunting rights. That's entirely appropriate. But people need to understand that owning a gun is a serious responsibility, and that's what we're trying to focus on.